February 9th, 9.47am. District Court. Defendant Lobby. Number 1. Oh my, Mr. Loris feels that way about me. Apparently, he isn't aware of your real secret at all. This is no time to be embarrassed. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm just hardly accustomed to that sort of thing. Worry not. In any case, whatever it was that he saw on that night of the incident, mark my words, I will drag it out of him. Does that mean Mr. Loris is the witness today? No. I believe that none will be the first to take the stand. Sister Bikini. She claims to have seen the very instant in which you carried out the crime. I just want to ask you one last time. It really wasn't you who killed Miss Elise Duenim, correct? That is correct. It wasn't me. Very well. Then? Um, Mr. Edgeworth? Yes? You are a prosecutor, aren't you? Are you sure about this? If your true identity is revealed... Don't worry. I made the necessary arrangements. I see. Iris. It is a prosecutor's job to doubt people. But right now, I am a defense attorney. A defense attorney's job is to believe in people. And to believe until the bitter end. And that's what my friend told me once. Mr. Retchworth, I simply ask that you watch and decide for yourself. Whether or not I am fit to do the task I have been entrusted. Very well, sir. I leave my defense in your capable hands. February 9th, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom, number seven. Oh, number seven, I love this one, it's lovely. Court is now in session for the trial of Sister Iris of Hazakura Temple. Was that her name? The defense is ready, Your Honor. The defense does indeed appear to be ready. However, the same cannot be said for the prosecution in this case. We shall throw the trial out. She's she's innocent. Done. Indeed. I'm not sure I like such a blatant waste of this court's time. An empty prosecutor's chair can only mean that the prosecutor has no confidence in their ability to prove their case. It would seem this case is already over before it had a chance to begin. It's it's, it's much more eloquent. It's it's really off-putting. Like he's come far, assuming it's the same one we had in the past. You know, it's like he's come far. Like based on what Edgeworth said, it does seem it would be him. But yeah, he he he's come far, and he's he's, he's eloquent. He's he's not sleeping on the job like a certain other judge. I am ready to renounce my verdict at this time. Uh, the court finds the defendant. The prosecution stands ready. Uh, and you are? Franziska von Karma. Prosecuting prodigy. V von Karma, you say? But chance you wouldn't be of any relation to the legendary prosecutor Manfred von Karma. The legends are a thing of the past. I am a von Karma. And that is all. Upon a special request, I flew in today for the purposes of prosecuting this case. You did? Uh, then you must be quite a big shot, eh? Uh, by the way, Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. I'm almost certain that I've seen you somewhere before. Or am I just imagining things? You look very much like a prosecutor I met once. I believe you are imagining things, Your Honor. Miss Von Karma, have anything to say? There is no such weakling as this man among those of the prosecutor's office. There isn't, but I'm sure once before in this co- hey. I told you there is no such weakling. What is that, a whip? I'm not sure I care for such a thing in my courtroom. Bailiff, remove that whip. That... Hold it. I have no objection to the whip. Y you don't? 
The prosecution can wield a whip or drink 17 cups of coffee. But there is still only one truth. That is what I stand here to prove today. This promises to be interesting, Miles Edgeworth. I had expected to face Phoenix right here today. But looking at you now, maybe this is what I have been waiting for all this time. Miles Edgeworth, I will not allow this chance to crush. You slip through my fingers. I see you brought your flair for the histrionic, oh my. Allow me to add to the things I'm not sure about. People acting bizarrely in my court. Ooh, the stage is set. Now continue with the proceedings, Your Honor. Well, Miss Von Karma, please give an outline of this case. With as little whipping as possible. The murder victim is the famed picture book author Miss Elise Duenim. Her body was found in the Hazakura Temple courtyard. She had been stabbed through the torso by a ceremonial sword for, from a golden statue. The sword in this picture is the weapon in question, correct? Very well, the court accepts this photo of the crime scene. Crime photo added to the court record. Okay. There is no mistake. This was the doing of Sister Iris. After all, there is a witness to her crime. Very well. Please bring this witness to the stand. And so it begins. My first and last trial as a defense attorney. How do you know it's your last? How, how do you know? Where, where is she? Witness, state your name and occupation, please. Well, hold on here. Not sure about uh, being not sure. I'm not sure about what? Why would? I'm not sure about being not sure if I care for this at all. What? I'm not sure about being not sure if I care about. Uh, where? I am not sure about being not sure if I care for this at all. Witness, please stand up nice and straight. I, my head cannot get around that. Ah, oh, much better. If I recall correctly, there are a few milk crates in the defendant's lobby for our back pain played witness. Bailiff, fetch a crate for this poor lady, please. Once again, your name and occupation, please. Little old me. Well, I'm the head nun of Hezekura Temple on Eagle Mountain. My name is Bikini, you got it? Bikini, nice to meet everyone. She don't appear to be wearing a bikini right now. Why? The courtroom is the Garden of Holy Judgment. Those with literary in their hearts should leave this sanctuary at once. Y you want me to leave? No need to get your bikinis in a twist. Let me tell you, I'm a sight to behold in summer. <laughs> in any case. Witness, I hear that you saw the crime take place on the night in question. And that's right. I can still hardly believe it myself, to be honest. There's no way dear little Iris could do anything like that. Let us hear what you have to say, then. First, tell us about... Oh, yeah, of course, Canadian. Tell us about your own movements that night, eh? The night of the murder. And that night, I was helping an acolyte with her training in the inner temple, but... And as you can see, my back likes to act up. Violently. So I left Iris to help the acolyte and returned to Hazakura Temple. There's no bath at the inner temple, you see and I needed a long, hot soak. So after I had finished, just as I was heading back, that's when I saw it. Hmm. So it was simply coincidence that you found yourself returning to Hazakura Temple? Yes, you could say that. If my back hadn't been in so much pain, I would have stayed at the Inner Temple. That sounds like a pretty important statement she just made. There's only one problem with this testimony that I can see. And you're not about to fall at the first hurdle now, are you, Mars Edgeworth? 
Mr. Edgeworth, please begin your cross-examination. The Night of the Moody. That night I was helping an acolyte with her training in the inner temple, but... As you can see, my back likes to act up violently. So I left Iris to help the acolyte and return to Hazakura Temple. See, I think that's where things fall apart, because... Sure we had... there we are. Rang lights out a uh, bell at 10pm and was then in her room until the murder was discovered. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through it. There's no bath at the inner temple, you see. And I need a long hot soap. It was after I had finished, just as I was heading back. That's when I saw it. There is indeed only one problem with this testimony. If I can clearly point out what it is, then I could begin to quantify just how good this witness's memory and observation skills are. Yeah, that's the only thing I could think of that would need pointing out. Alright, so... Witnesses have to undergo their own trials, I'm afraid. The defendant's fate rests on their powers of observation and memory, after all. Well, well, well. Her face was jiggling, wasn't it? Don't worry, I'm more than up to the task. I'm a woman of faith, after all. The head honcho of Hazakura Temple. In that case, Miss Honcho, I'd like you to explain something for me. The discrepancy between your testimony and that of the defendant, Iris. She claims that after ringing the lights out bell, she went back and stayed in her room. Which means she did not go to the inner temple at all. No, no, no. She said that? A defendant or a witness? Who is more likely to lie, do you suppose? Either. The defendant is simply lying to cover her back. But that is completely illogical. The murder was committed in the courtyard of Hasakura Temple. Claiming that she went to the inner temple would make for a much better alibi. Good point. But that is odd. Whatever the reason, I can't believe that she would lie. Hmm. She does indeed have honest eyes. Well, you... All people lie. That is my belief. Why am I the only one being whipped in here? Anyway, neither the witness nor the defendant have any reason to lie. Which means, you must call your memory into question. Dear, dear, dear. You're older than me, and yet you want to play that game, do you? Uh, well, that isn't exactly what I, uh... My memory is perfect, crystal clear, especially in winter. Then I suppose it's too early to end this cross-examination, eh? Mr. Edgeworth, if you are going to question the memory of this witness, you will need to show me a more decisive piece of evidence. Ooh. Understood, Your Honor. I was naive. Double dot! To think, and that alone would do the trick. And please add your comments about uh, Boot Iris to the testimony. And let us return to the cross-examination. That night I was helping an acolyte with her training in the inner temple, but... As you can see, my back likes to act up violently. Iris came to the inner temple. She was dressed exactly as she had been at dinner. No, she wasn't. Objection! Witness? Let's get one thing straight. The defendant whom you claim to have met... She was wearing this demon warding hood, correct? Of course. That is a very important piece of clothing. I'll have you know. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold it right there. Why do you have that? That's the question of the day now, isn't it, Miss Von Karma? I'll have you know that this hood was given to someone as a gift that night. Before the lights out bell was rung. What? You know where I'm going with this, don't you? If the witness had seen the defendant as she claims, then the iris she saw should have been missing this very hood. Well, well, well. She's got a box. She actually, actually has got a box in that image. 
It's not a bad feeling. She's not a box. It's not a bad feeling at all, exposing contradictions like this. Now I understand that happy look on Wright's face every time he does it. Order. Order in the court. Really? Sister. This hood. You have spare ones around the temple, don't you? Spares? Well, I do tend to make too many of them. I see. A stockpile, a surplus of hoods, eh? Each nun is only given one HUD. This should be the only HUD that Iris owned. Hmm. And this is quite strange. <laughs> if there was a surplus of hoods, then she could have worn one of those. There's no contradiction here. Hmm. I'm sorry to break this to you, Miss Von Karma, but you won't get away that easy. Discrepancies such as this will sow seeds in any human heart. The seeds of doubt. Witness. But I don't wish to call your testimony into doubt. You must give every detail with precision. I'm not sure I'm comfortable going along with this. Sister, you shall continue with your testimony. Tell us what you saw after finishing your bath on your way back to the inner temple. Those seeds of doubt are sprouting in the judge's heart. They just need a little more stimulation to bear fruit. Contradictory stimulation. Alright. After my bath. I finished my bath around 11 and I thought I should return to the inner temple. And as I was walking back, I heard a noise from the courtyard. I took a look around and... Iris was... Oh, Mr. Kalees, and with that sort of all things. Mr. Kalees was staying in the corner room, which faces out onto the courtyard. The stopping I saw must have occurred after she was pushed out of her window. How do you know? How, 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 do, how does she know? You saw a truly terrible sight, didn't you? If I was in your place. And then it would be much like Miss Von Karma whipping Mr. Edgeworth in, in, in two in court. All right. And me seeing it all from this very chair. Oh, well, something like that. This judge. His imagination is about as vivid and creative as um, Detective Gumshoe. I would look the fool if I commented on such foolishness. Anyway, this case is mine. Miles Edgeworth? Calling everyone by their full name, can't you do something about that habit of yours? After my bath, like, how do you, how, how do you know, how do you know? I finished my bath around 11 and I thought I should return to the inner temple. As I was walking back, I heard a noise from the courtyard. I took a look and Iris was, oh, Mr. Gillies, and with that sword of all things, Mr. Gillies was staying in the corner broom which faces out onto the courtyard. The stabbing I saw must have occurred after she was pushed out of a window. How do you know she was pushed out the window? That's the bit, like, I don't remember you ever being told or informed of the situation other than the stabbing. Hold it! What makes you so sure of all this? It's just like I told you earlier. I heard a noise from the courtyard, okay? Thump. Just like that. Doesn't mean someone was pushed out a window. You're one smart sister, I'll give you that. The autopsy report states that the victim's body was covered in bruises, indicating a fall from around 10 feet in height. But how did she know? Hmm, it appears that the witness was not mistaken then, but that's... it's too... too specific. Yep, yep. I'm more than just a pretty face, especially in winter. I'm a woman of faith, after all. Head honcho of... As a Kura Temple. Hmm. Is there any two of them working there? What's wrong, Mars Edgeworth? No snappy comeback remark? Doesn't feel like she's lying. This is a very powerful testimony, too. She claims to have seen the instant in which the defendant stabbed the victim. There are only two things I can believe in right now. My client, Iris, and my own abilities as a defense attorney. Okay. So let's have a look at the, uh... 
autopsy report. Okay, so right, because it says here in the autopsy report, like, cause, loss of blood from the stab in the back. Okay, body fell 10 feet after death. So, if that's the case... I suppose all my small of all things that sort of all things. Mr. Galise was staying in the corner room, which faces out of the courtyard. Stopping I saw must have occurred after she was pushed out the window. Yeah. I still feel like there's something there. Hmm. It's this case of like, how do you know it's out of a window? Again, like, you don't have the information from the autopsy report. You don't know. Hmm. This is the only, like, inkling I've got at the moment. It's just this idea of, like, how does she know she was pushed out a window? How do, how do you know that? You heard a thump. That could mean anything. Could have been pushed to the ground very hard. That could have done it. But it's the, the specifics of the window. So how do you know about the window? And what more details do you know about, like, her being pushed out that I don't have from the autopsy report? Is what I'm thinking. Like, what? There's got to be more there. Objection! Impressive logic. That's what I'd like to say anyway. Oh, please do. My brain is something else. Especially in winter. However, I think you are overlooking one thing. Miss Von Karma, would you be so kind as to take another look at the autopsy report? The autopsy report? The victim did fall from a height of 10 feet. However, this fall was after she was killed. Oh uh, yeah, I suppose then it would be that case of like, it doesn't matter who, who you saw stabbing her, she was already dead. So. Yeah. That's right, it says after death right here. The scene the witness claims to have seen is contradictory. If the defendant stabbed and killed the victim there in the courtyard, how did the victim then go on to take a ten-foot fall? It wasn't the line of logic I was pursuing, but that's... It's a good point. Order, order! The victim was killed and then fell? If that is the case, then the victim must have been killed in her room, don't you agree? That is the logical conclusion. Yes, that's right, the victim must have been stabbed by the defendant in her own room. And she was then thrown out of her window down into the courtyard below. And stabbed her again so Bikini could see it? Objection! Were there any signs of a struggle in Miss Duenim's room? She was stabbed with a sword. That would leave a blood stain, wouldn't you agree? Well, Miss Von Karma, was there any blood? Were no traces of blood were found in the victim's room. Your whip has just caused traces of blood to be found on my glorious playoff beard. However, there was no blood in the room. Were I'm sure there's no need for me to go over this, as I'm sure Your Honor is well aware. But when a stab wound produces the most blood... When it produces the most blood... Very little blood is actually lost at the moment of a blade's insertion. If you want to talk about when the most blood would be lost from a body... Then that would be when the blade is removed. Indeed. The weapon's still in place. It acts like a lid on the wound. That's true. The weapon's still in the body, there wouldn't be much bleeding. So maybe... Iris is just trying to take the sword out and save her. Like, some, like someone had the sword, was in her room, stabbed her, maybe pushed her out at the same time as stabbing her, or the stab pushed her out the window or something like that. Iris came along, panicked, and tried to pull out the sword. And that's when Bikini came like round a corner and was like, Oh my god, she's stabbing her! And it's like, no. That explains why she's like pulled back and stuff like that. It's like, hmm. Oh, that's true, with the weapon still in the body, there wouldn't be much bleeding. Perfectly reasonable line of thinking. We have come to a conclusion then. 
The victim was thrown out of the window with the sword still in place. This removes all of the contradictions. Hmm. Order, order, order. I must admit that this is a probable version of events. But I still want to question what I wanted to question. That's that whole, like, how do you know she was pushed out the window? Were you informed? That's all I want to know. It's like, were you actually informed of these little details? Like, you, yeah, you know she was there. There was a thump and all this type of stuff. But you, you knew too much, Bikini. I'd expect no less from Franziska von Karma. She locates and takes control of every vital point. <laughs> Seems. That we need a clearer testimony from the witness. Yes, yes, we do. Remove all supposition on your part and tell us only the facts, please. Yeah, that's what I need. Thank you, Judge. But witness, please remain standing on the crate. Don't go sending me short now. The weight of winter snow has bent me out of shape. Especially my back and my mood. Sister, please give us your testimony. I will give you a vigorous massage once we are finished here. With the whip. Oh, boy. All right, all right. Further details. When I looked across at the scene, the sword was already in place. Thinking about it now, I didn't actually see her stab Mr. Khalees. Okay, see there, it's like, it could be like she's pulling it out. Like, maybe she's already dead, and she's trying to pull out the sword. That fits. I've never seen so much blood before. That's when I fainted. You can't blame me, can you? And when I awoke, Mystic Amy was stabbing Mystic Elise through the back. Hmm. That is a good point. How does that all fit together? Cause, right, if she was trying to... Hmm. Hmm. I'm trying to, like, piece together in my head, like, what I think. So it's like, so Iris took out the sword? And then put it back in to make it look like the statue did it? Oh, that, hmm. Hmm. It is all, all confirms uh, Miss Von Karma's theory. Von Karma strive for nothing but perfection. Putting together such facts is nothing for me. You should know that, Miles Edgeworth. Perfection is an impossibility, Franziska Von Karma. And I'm here to teach you just that. Further details. Hmm. When I looked across at the scene, the sword was already in place. Thinking about it now, I didn't actually see her stab Mr. Khalees. I've seen so much blood before. Now, the thing is, we've just spoken about this whole idea of, like... There shouldn't be that much blood because the sword's still there. So... What's going on here? That's when I fainted. You can't blame me, can you? When I awoke, Mystic Amy was stabbing Mystic Elise through the back. There are too many unnatural elements in this case. Why was it necessary to use the that sword from the Amy statue as a weapon? Why was the weapon ultimately placed back in the hand of the statue? Thank you, thank you. If I can expose the flaws in this testimony, perhaps then I will begin to find the truth. The only, the only inkling I've got is the whole blood situation. When I looked across at the scene, the sword was already in place. Thinking about it now, I didn't actually see her stab Mr. Khalees. Never seen so much blood before. Because this is the case of, like... That would imply the blade had already been taken out, but your statement doesn't say that. That's based on what we've just gone through, so... So you're saying that you saw the victim's blood? That's right. Some of it had splattered onto Iris, too. When the defendant was arrested, she was meditating in her room, and her blood-flecked clothing was neatly folded in the corner. What? Her clothes were blood-flecked as well? Hmm, that seems quite conclusive to me. What should I do? Press this point further? Yeah. 
Going back to your previous statement, you said that you saw a little bleeding when the victim was stabbed. But now, you say you saw the victim bleeding. Well, well, I, I say that what I saw is what I saw. What did you see? Maybe I didn't see the poor woman get stabbed, but I saw the girl pull the sword out of her, plain as day. Now why would she pull it out? Pulling the sword out. Well, it wasn't exactly pulling. It was more like it came out. Witness, you will add this statement to your testimony. Oh, was that important? Could be. More important than you can imagine. Oh. I saw the instant in which the blade plunged into the hilt was smoothly drawn out. Smoothly? Smoothly, you say? You're saying you saw the sword smoothly slide out. That's right. The whole thing happened right next to the gold statue of Mystic Amy. You're telling me that sword came out smoothly. Are you seeing, like, the, the, the different aspects of it sticking out? Like, that came out smoothly? How big was the wound? Mr. Galise was on the ground, and Iris was stooped over her. The sword was buried up to the hilt. No way that came out smoothly. Not at the hilt. When Iris stood up, the sword in her hand just slid out of Mr. Galise's body. Slid out from the gaping wound. Ah. It was about saying, if the sword was removed, there would be bleeding. Nothing out of place here. Is that really the case? I can't help but feel that something about this testimony is very out of place. That something which couldn't possibly have happened appears to have happened. I've never seen so much blood before. Now go back. It, again, smoothly is all I'm thinking there. Like, no way you would pull that blade out smoothly. Like, even if the, like, the wound would slightly close and stuff like that, it's like, no. No, you're not pulling that out smoothly. Objection! Sister Bikini, you are a reliable witness. At least, I'd like to think so. But there are too many contradictions here. What do you mean? You make it sound as though I'm a liar. But... You're a handsome young man, so I'll forgive you. What contradictions are you talking about? In the scene that the witness claims to have seen. The weapon was thrust up to the hilt into the victim. Furthermore, the killer withdrew the weapon smoothly from the body. However, both of these are complete impossibilities. Oh, it is quite impossible. What do you mean? Please explain your... Oh, explain yourself. To start with, do you think it would be possible to stab someone to the hilt with this? That's a good point as well, that would be... Like, trying to get that into someone smoothly is going to be difficult as well. No matter how I look at the defendant, she doesn't appear strong enough for that. Objection! Doesn't appear? What a meaningless dribble. I too may appear to be weak and frail. But I can crush men under my heel and make them weep, should I so choose. The objection stands. I wept a little back there, I must admit. That isn't the only issue here. If this sword was truly stabbed into the body up to the hilt, well, just look at all the branches on it. it certainly wouldn't come out smoothly. That's... We also have the problem of the amount of bleeding. It's true that when a blade is left in a body, it acts as a plug of sorts. However, when the weapon is shaped like this, it's an entirely different story. Yeah, it's gonna leave gaping holes, isn't it? The wound would be too large for the blade to completely stop the bleeding. Objection! That's nothing more than conjecture. In reality, the victim was stabbed with the... spiky sword. Even a weapon of this nature may still sometimes slide out smoothly and may still sometimes stop the blood loss. Objection! I'm not finished. There is still one more conclusive contradiction. You, you still got more? This one is simple. If this sword really was thrust in all the way to the hilt, why is there any blood on the tip of it? Ah. 
If this witness is telling the truth, then there should be blood along the entire length of the sword. No. Blood everywhere. Order, order, away. Bravo, Mars Edgewa. Raising this many contradictions from a single piece of evidence. All the other attorneys I know could maybe manage one, if that. What does this all mean? You have proven contradictions regarding the murder weapon, but... Having come this far, there can only be one answer. And that is... The weapon used to kill the victim... Was not the spiky sword. What? A foolishly foolish idea, born from the foolish mind of a foolhardy foolish fool. Let's examine this again. What was it that made us think that this sword was the murder weapon? Well... Because Mystic Amy was holding it? Exactly. However, if you reflect on this, that is the only basis we have to assume such a thing. It's... the impression left by the scene is just too strong. That is what influenced us. So wait, there was another blade? It influenced us to believe that the spiky sword was the murder weapon. Right, another blade, or man? Order, order, order. Wait, so maybe the spiky blade was not the murder weapon. If that is the case, changes nothing, Mars Edgeworth. I mean, changes quite a bit. The sister here saw everything. She saw the defendant stab the victim with a sword-like object. Yes, but we need the sword like object with the fingerprints on it then. Simple as that. Hmm. That's true. Your response, Mr. Edgeworth? If that is so, I would like the prosecution to answer the obvious question it raises. The obvious question? Yes. Namely, where did the real murder weapon disappear to? It goes without saying that the police searched the main hall and the surrounding area. Perhaps the prosecution can enlighten us as to if a sword-like object was found? Let's answer the question, Miss Von Garma. No evidence of that kind was found. Oh, I have a sword. What? Hmm, another mystery to throw onto the pile. Trial without a murder weapon is a tricky beast. Excuse me, could I say something? I just remembered something, actually. What is it, sister? I was just thinking, it's possible that just maybe what actually happened was, it was just over there. What exactly are you going on a boot here? A murder weapon, I mean. Maybe, uh, I think I might know where the sword is d was disposed of. You what? Well then, I think we need to hear the testimony from you one more time, sister. Impossible. What else? What else could this woman have seen?